getting ready to give birth. And the scripture says that it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mary had a cousin named Elizabeth who was expecting a child. I think what is significant to us here tonight that these two women came together and shared their stories. When Elizabeth found out that her friend was coming, there was something in her spirit that began to leap. There's something about coming together with ladies and coming together with friends and coming together with a collective effort that when God understands what we have come into this house today, this place this weekend might have been something else going on. Them, and I want to take this time to first 
it's close to you. You can eat there, pay for your food. It is a five dollar cover charge. The world ain't the only ones that's got cover charges. They're out at a club with major cover charges, but the cover charge is five dollars for your desserts. We're gonna have all kinds of desserts plus. Made us get in arguments, and it just—it was never good. 
And so as, the, as years went by and I went into the forties and everything, and then life got a little busy, I pursued a career, I went back to school. Um, then, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it seemed like it just got easier. I guess I got used to it. Maybe some would say I became complacent, but all I know is I just, it was just life, you know, and, and when it was time to go to church, I'd kiss him. Bye, honey. And when I got home, I'd kiss him. Hello, hi, honey. It was just the way life was. And I no longer missed him sitting by me in church. I did. It was just, that was the way my life was. I really was not involved in, in, in any way in the church. I just was kind of attending. was not a leader. I didn't do anything with married couples anymore. And I felt very, kind of like, left out. But I knew that people were praying for me. I knew Sister Coopley, she would never give up on me. Because literally, I'm not gonna lie, toward the, toward the last few years, and I'm sure my pastor knew that I was really hanging on by a thread. I really was. And I, I sometimes just wonder, what, what am I? Who am I in this church, you know? I just, I didn't even know my place in the church. I felt so angry. And, um, but I knew I couldn't give up, and I was literally hanging on by a thread. A Anyway, last year, and I, I, sometimes I couldn't relate to conference, sometimes I wouldn't. It was just a hit and miss thing, and it didn't really matter at that point. I was like, sometimes she wanted to give me my job. I worked nights, I couldn't always make it. But last year, and Sister Gooley always encouraged me to come. She always asked me to come. Well, last year, by the skin of my teeth, by Sister Gooley, I made it. We, I came to Ladies' Conference. And when I left Ladies' Conference, there was another issue of bitterness and unforgiveness going on in my life with my sister. And when I left Ladies Conference last year, I was challenged to rectify that. And I remember the preacher, the speaker said, if you do not do something tonight about your situation, you don't do something and make a move, you're going to stagnate. And, and, and you're going to stay the same. And I knew, hanging just by a thread, I wasn't going to make it if I didn't fix it. So I went home, and the very next day, I sent her a text saying, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make it right. We weren't speaking for months. There was no speaking. And even though I felt like I had the right to hold that against her, she had hurt me, I knew I had to do something with this, but she didn't respond. I left the voicemail, and here I think I'm humbling myself, and that she's going to be like, oh, you know, this yes, of course. Nope. And to this night, I have not heard anything. And that challenged me. That threw me for a loop, honestly. I was like, what? what? I did what you wanted me to do, and now I just feel like crushed. Like, she just didn't even respond. But you know what? That incident, that, I mean, that, that action, that challenged me to stay accountable to God and to watch these spirits. It, you know, when I started to get complacent again in my spirit, I was like, wait a minute. Then I, if I get complacent, I get full, I'm going to regret that I ever did that text. I'm going to regret that I ever tried to call her. I don't want to go there. I want to check my spirit and always be grateful that God was doing it. God was doing it. That kind of, that accountability made me pray more. And in, in that, I started to grow more. And I was starting to grab onto a few more threads and hoping, and hoping to grab onto a rope. Instead of just threads, I started to pray more for other people than just my family. And I made a commitment to start praying for my pastor and his wife and their three kids and their husbands. Like I never did before. I just started, I call all their people, Chris, E. Scott, and Nathan, my brother-in-law, and their wives and their kids. And I just started praying for them like never before. I started praying for the leaders of my church like never before. Just praying and praying and just getting outside of my world. I have enough problems where I start praying for others. Well, I, it kind of, you know, it's a long story, but it seemed like out of nowhere, this past September, my husband came up to me and said, Hey, Melissa. He's like, I don't know why, but I feel the Holy Ghost calling me back. And I was just like, Oh. Our pastor's Sunday morning meetings, he plays the bass. Not as good as this guy, but he plays the bass. <laughs> I was so happy. I really am. I, I am so happy. I'm standing behind him. I'm appreciating. I'm, I'm, I'm 
not judging my husband if he's not approving of my husband. I don't care. He's not. I'm, not, I'm just trying to support him, pray for him. And if your husband is in church, support him, pray for him. He may not be perfect, but be grateful. He did this. He's been faithful. I've been nothing to deserve this. Whoa, whoa. 